Hello, I'm David Tower, and welcome to the Theories of Everything program again. Viewers, this is the second part of our three program series, Theories of Time, in which we examine probably the most enigmatic phenomena in the universe. Whatever the period, whatever the metric of measurement, it still doesn't get us really any closer to the nature of time. So in our first program, viewers, we look broadly across the conceptualizations that have evolved from the very earliest cosmogenies when humans first conceptualized that when the world was born, when the world was created, so time was created. This was a natural, a very natural way of looking at history, in fact, at the very beginning. And it's not so far distant, in fact, from the way time has been conceptualized right up to very close to this century. And once having looked at that, we looked at the major milestones broadly in our first program. We looked at the way that the Greeks looked at time, for example, Plato and Aristotle. And Plato, of course, saw it as a majestic backdrop against which everything was played out. And that really is very close to Plato's whole philosophy that the objects that we see around us, the so-called real objects, are just shadow plays of what goes on behind. And Aristotle, of course, was the opposite in all aspects of his philosophy. These were the two great Greek philosophers, apart from many others, but they stood out because of their opposed philosophies. Aristotle saw change as the key driver of reality. The stuff around us, the real objects, were, the, were it, according to Aristotle. And that included change. Change was everywhere. So he incorporated time within life. Plato saw it as a backdrop to life. Um, and so basically these two philosophies continue to compete with each other. Is time, right up to the present time in fact, the present day, is time merely that stage on which everything is acted out, that flow of time, the thing that we conceptualise from an infinite past to an infinite future, from birth to death, or is it intimately part of life? Is it something there wrapped up in the cycles of the seasons, in the cycles of the stars and the planets, in our body clocks, uh, the way we understand our life around us? So, over time, and it's very hard to talk without using the word time, Time, again, is a part of our language. It's an everyday thing that's around us everywhere but nowhere. So over the period of history, if you like, um, these two theories have competed. And we saw the great uh, mathematician, the great physicist, Newton, was one of the first to sort of add something very significant to the notion of time. He also he saw time as a backdrop, but he was able to understand the periods of the planets and understand gravity in terms of slices of time. He sliced time up into infinitesimal pieces in the form of his calculus because he saw that change was, or being able to measure change, being able to measure changes in position, changes in velocity. And his uh, major law, force is equal to mass by acceleration, incorporates change. A body stays in its present state of motion or at rest until it's acted on by a force. But that force produces a change and acceleration. And he was able to come to that uh, realisation to make that, uh, to formulate that equation because he was able to slice change and time up into, into infinitely small pieces. But again he saw time as a majestic, almost deistic thing in the background, space and time in fact. And then we saw in our first program that Einstein appeared and Einstein changed everything because he, he made time relative to the frame of the observer. If the observer was going very fast towards the speed of light, which is a constant, to, the, to every observer, um, time would change. Time would expand, time would dilate. dilate. Um, time would proceed much slower the faster the observer was moving in that time frame. So different events, 
that might occur at the same time, two different events to one observer can occur at different times to a, to a moving observer. Um, he conceptualised uh, gravity and space-time as a dynamic thing, uh, as, a, as something basically related to the mass acting on space-time, warping space-time, the mass of an object. And um, also he related not only the speed of light, the time, um, to the changes in time from the observer's point of view, but he related gravity itself to time. Time moves more slowly uh, near an object with larger mass. So it moves slower, more slowly to an observer very close to Earth than, very, than further away, or close to the Sun or further away, and particularly close to a massive object like a neutron star or a black hole than, than further away. And this is able to create, uh, this is one solution to creating, for example, a time machine, which we'll talk about in a moment. But most of all, Einstein combines space and time into one uh, form, into space-time. He blended the three dimensions of time, of space with the dimension of time, a four-dimensional space-time. And uh, in this instance, time was part of the universe. It was part of change. Uh, it was part of the geometry of the universe, in fact. And this wasn't just sort of some whimsical mathematical thing uh, that he conceived. Space, time is one, so time and space can be interchanged.